I really owe our next speaker a huge amount of gratitude. She truly did me a solid because, you know, when you get a last minute cancellation on a speaker, what do you do to fill that slot? Um, and as a speaker, when you call the day before or, you, or you're asked the day before to speak at something, you, you don't have anything prepared, you haven't thought about it, you're not even like in that space. So to say yes is, I mean, that's a, that's a huge deal. So thank you so much for saying yes and agreeing to be here today to help fill the time. So she is a relationship expert, master empowerment coach, and media personality. She tells it like it is on topics that are difficult to talk about and has a no-nonsense style, which allows her to deliver common sense strategies and practical tools while being refreshingly authentic, firmly supportive, funny, and wise. She has been featured on major media outlets, and I'm super excited to announce that her first appearance on the Steve Harvey Morning TV show will, will air on July 11th. So, she's here to talk about communication that connects for lovers, leaders, and live streamers. Please welcome Hillary Silver. So like Aaron said, I found out yesterday at like 4 o'clock that there was a space to fill, so this is my one and only slide. <laughs> I decided to spend more time thinking about what I was going to say than making the slides. So I'm Hillary Silver. I'm a relationship expert, and I hear ringing. Did you hear the ringing? Okay. Um, and uh, so relationship expert and empowerment coach. <laughs> But I started my career 15 years ago, and I've been in private practice as a therapist in that time. Okay. Oh, maybe that's it. Okay, so I started my practice 15 years ago. Oh my God, where do I stand? Okay. Uh, and in that time, I've worked with thousands of men, women, and couples. Um, but now I spend all my time live streaming and creating content and um, sharing my knowledge on a bigger stage. Um, I, two years ago, just got really tired of in my brick and mortar business, helping one person at a time in the privacy of my office with the same stuff that we're all dealing with. I found myself repeating myself over and over and over. And, you know, when we're struggling with something that's really personal, not only are we struggling with it, but we feel like we're the only one. And I'm thinking, well, I know you're not the only one because I hear it again and again and again. So. Right when I discovered Periscope was a time for me when I was itching to get this message out on all things with love and sex and marriage and infidelity and feeling confident and anxiety and all that stuff that I help people with. And um, somebody told me about Periscope. I downloaded the app and fearlessly I just hit start broadcast. The first time I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I was sweaty. I had just gone for a run. and then, Everybody kept saying, you need to double tap the screen. We're looking at your windowsill. <laughs> so I, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't care. I just was so excited that I had this microphone and a huge stage. Um, and so my journey, really everybody who I consider a friend who is here today is because of live streaming. I've made all my newest friends in business. Um, they're not just business friends, they're real friends, but that's what brought us together, and it's just changed my life. Um, so if you have a brick and mortar business, I would consider, highly consider doing live streaming because there's no better way to connect to your audience than to let them see you and feel you. And so what I'm talking about today, um, really, because I'm a relationship person, I wanna talk about your communication and how your communication will either make or break your relationships and whether that is your customers who find you or your audience who find you live streaming, business relationships, or somebody you might wanna go home with, so, or share a home with. So, um, yeah, so in our relationships, the, what do you think is the most important thing? Like when I ask what's the top five things that you need in a relationship, what's the first thing you think everybody says? Trust, trust. Without trust, you have nothing. 
and I know we've heard the no like and trust thing today. I want to help you have a little bit more awareness of how you're communicating that will either make those relationships for you or break them because there's a lot of things you're probably doing that you don't know you're doing. Um, and so that's my point today. Okay, so, and I call them the five C's of communication. And it all starts with you. So the first C is clarity. Clarity meaning you need to know yourself really well. If you haven't done that work, you need to do it. Not just for your business, but for who you are. You can't attract the right people if you don't know who you are. They can't find you. You can't ask for what you need if you don't know what that is. You will send the wrong message if you're talking about things that aren't important to you or that don't resonate with you. So it's really, really, really important to do the work to get clear. And the things that I want you to be thinking about that you need to know are um, like your core values. What pisses you off? What upsets you? What drives you? What are you passionate about? What do you like? What are your thoughts about things? One of the reasons that my audience has come to trust me is because I'm really clear about that. They can expect from me to be really clear about where I stand. They don't have to agree, but they know from me what that is, and that makes them feel certain with me. And certainty is what gives us confidence and makes us feel safe in our relationships. So clarity is one. The next one is congruence. Congruency is when what you say and how you say it match. Have you ever, I know we've all done this, so it's a rhetorical question, but have you ever said, no, that's fine. No, it's fine. Does that, it does it, yeah, could be different for men and women, yes. But when you're, the way you're saying what you're saying isn't in alignment, you're sending a mixed message. And sometimes we do that on purpose, but not on purpose. <laughs> We're letting our tone send the message or do the talking for us instead of our words. So if it's not fine, say it's not freaking fine, right? If you're not fine, don't say you are and then let the person stew and simmer and wonder what you really mean. That's not fair, right? You, that's not fair to your lover. It's not fair to a customer. They don't know where they stand with you when there's that disconnect. So say it's really fine. And Crystal, where are you? <laughs> She was earlier saying, I just need the language. I don't know what to say. Start me off. So you might say, um, I'm really not okay, but I don't really know what I want. Or I'm really not okay, but I don't really know why yet. I have to figure that out. But at least right now, I don't know what that is. You know, I don't know. So that's congruency. I'm really making sure that you're checking your tone. Um, no sarcasm no mixed messages because you're not being direct. Okay, so that's so far clarity, congruency, and the next is credibility. And credibility is huge, and I know that seems really basic, but I'm gonna give you another twist on it so it's, you think about it in a new way. So credibility is what? I'm sorry, do you believe me? So it's about whether I'm telling the truth. So we all think about telling the truth as fact. You went where you said you were gonna go, you did what you said you were gonna do, right? We all think about it as that, and that is an important part of telling the truth. But there's a whole lot more to telling the truth than just that, and it's actually the bigger part because you feel it when somebody's not, and it makes you feel uncomfortable. And so that other part of truth-telling is the telling of feeling. Your thoughts, your feelings, your opinions, your perspectives, what you want, what you don't want. And so, um, so when you're saying um, that you'll do something, but you don't really want to be doing it, are you being credible? Not really. In Mia's talk, she was talking about one of the things that she hated or we all agreed that we hated is when somebody doesn't do something they say they're going to do. But this is why. They had no intention of doing it. They just wanted to make you happy or for you to like them or to avoid disappointing you or to not have conflict. So 
When you don't want to do something, don't be a yes person. Tell the truth, your truth, not just the truth, but your truth. And when you do that, that gives people, again, that sense of certainty about you. They know where they stand. They're not going to walk away and wonder, what does she really think? Is this really what she wants to do? I'm not sure. I couldn't tell her body language or, right? You're not giving people who are in your life in any of those ways, in any of those ways, a sense of safety with you. I hate that feeling. I think it's the worst feeling ever. Okay, so clarity, congruency, credibility, consistency. We've also heard about consistency today. Um, but that has been more in terms of what time you're live streaming uh, every day and that you show up every day. I want you to be thinking about how you're showing up every day. The same person every day, which isn't hard when you're just being yourself. But when you're not being yourself, you may not be the same person from day to day. I know when I'm out in the community and I sort of know somebody, one day they might acknowledge me and say hi, and the next time I see them, they might not really say hi. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with them, but what I experience of that is somebody who's hot and cold, or one day they're nice, and the next day they're not, and I hate that. <laughs> I would never do that to anybody, at least not on purpose. So it's okay to be in a bad mood, it's okay to be grumpy, it's okay to feel not being social, but that's your truth that you need to be owning and telling. So when I come home to my husband, I can say to him, I'm in a really bad mood today, or this really just happened, and I don't feel like talking right now, so I'm going to go for a walk. And I'm not making him wonder if my mood has anything to do with him. It's not his fault. I own it. And how do you think that makes him feel with me? He's like off the hook, right? So, where am I at? I don't have my slides. If I had slides, it would help me keep track. <laughs> Consistency. And that was the fourth one, right? Okay, so the last one, short little talk. Uh, the last one is curiosity. So the others were all about how you're putting yourself out. This one is about how you're drawing people in. Curiosity is how you're eliciting information from other people. Again, when you're at an event like this and someone's talking to you, are you looking around the room to see who might be better to talk to or more interesting or what's going on over there? Because that's not going to feel good to the person that you're talking to. That does not make them feel important, and that's not how you're going to win anyone over at all. Um, when you ask a question, you really, really, really listen. Or don't ask it if you're not interested. That's fine, too. If you're not in the mood to have a chat, don't ask the question. But be really, really curious. And, and, and use active listening, which we've all probably heard, but probing questions. Tell me more about that. I want to know more. Or what was that like? Because you're really making this person feel important to you and you're making them feel safe. And that is how you're, with all these combined, especially when you put them all together, it's how you really build solid relationships that have strong foundation of trust. Okay? So that's really all I got. I don't know how long I had today, but it was like 10 minutes. That's all I had today. <laughs> Anybody have any questions about those things? Yeah. So is this what your show is about? And do you um, live stream the show just talking to the audience? Or do you engage back and forth? So my show um, is actually, um, when I started on Periscope, it was every single day for six months. And... I wasn't prepared for the online business world, so I just did it because I enjoyed it and it felt so good. In fact, I was like really addicted, like so many of us become. Um, and then I switched over to Facebook um, and I just needed to slow down and do it once a week. And so I decided a set time, a set week to show up and I would post the topic ahead of time so that they knew I was coming on board. And the topic is usually about all things relationship. And I will talk about anything with me. There's no such thing as TMI, that's my rule. So you can ask anything, um, anything about sex, body fluids, <laughs> you name it. I don't get embarrassed, and I want you to not feel embarrassed either because we all have the same stuff happening to us, and that's what I love about live streaming is that we can experience that with each other. Um, so this link that was on my slide that's not there anymore um, is, is my website, hillarysilver.com forward slash smdayden. And that's a, um, I set that up so that you could go get a free consultation with me for 20 minutes if you're having any issues 
with your communication, with your relationships, with friendships, with anything like that. Um, I do private coaching and I just, um, I just opened a membership, which is a very, very low cost monthly way. I have three monthly online trainings. Two of them are live Q&A. One of them is mostly just teaching, but there is a Q&A element um, so that it, the masses can get the same information from me. Um, so those, thank you. Thank you, Hillary.